one of the biggest things that the Caucasian bees offer us as beekeepers is they have the longest proboscis. What this means is they can get their tongue deeper into the flower pistil and be able to get the nectar out of there where other honeybees are not going to be able to go that deep. So they're better nectar collectors than any of the honeybees that we carry. They are gentle. They are as gentle as the Italians. They are winter hardy. They are from the Caucasus Mountains that have very harsh climate. And they're used to the highest peaks in Europe of 18,000 plus feet above sea level. They're a very diverse type of bee. And Nikki, I think that was one of the things that kind of blew you away this past season Mm -hmm. is how much demand we were seeing for the Caucasian bees. Yeah, we really had a lot. I was actually quite surprised. I didn't think that they would be as popular as they are, but people love them. And we sold out Mm -hmm. well, well in advance on those. So folks, this is one that you want to order today. First of all, you get the best prices. Second, you have the best selection of dates. So between those two, you do not want to be looking for this bee when it comes December will be sold out on the Caucasian bees. So order today, save big dollars. All right, so the Caucasians produce the highest amount of honey in years with a poor nectar supply. They're out collecting when others are not able to because there's minimal nectar deep down into the flower that they can collect that the others can't. They can collect honey from different plants simultaneously. That is a big plus there for them too. And they're able to fly in light rain or even into fog. A lot of us this time of the year see some heavy fog up in the the northern area above the Mason-Dixon line. And they're out there getting it done. They have superior vision. They have more facets in their eyes than any other honeybees. And you can see the numbers there that the normal honeybees only have six to 9,000, where they have 10 to 12,000 facets. So they can see a lot better the nectar ability of flowering plants on, on that side. The Caucasians have very strong colonies in size. They're going to go into winter the largest size colony going into the winter months. That cluster will be very robust and they'll be able to create the heat that is needed within the hive to keep it warm. A low inclination on swarming, very limited swarming that you'll see on the Caucasians. The queen bees are quite tempered in gentle, calm, and non-aggressive. Bee venom doesn't cause nearby bees to sting simultaneously as a reaction to that pheromone. They have a different pheromone than any of the other honeybees that we carry. And so they're not going to be drawn to that scent or that pheromone that's given off by a Caucasian. I actually didn't know that last part. So yeah. um, look at me learning stuff today. Yeah. Flesh that out a little bit. Uh, describe that scenario for me of what uh, could happen with these pheromones involving other bees. Do they get bees riled up to where they want to okay. come sting everybody? All right. So what we have is, is let's just say we have our gloves on and we're pulling out a frame and we we just smushed one of the worker bees. That worker bee will let out a pheromone signaling to others. If I got it on this finger, mm-hmm. those bees are going to be drawn to that finger to sting. Okay. So that's the thing that we have to remember about these attack pheromones is that other bees will come, not necessarily from that hive, be it will be from other hives. Right, a universal distress yeah. signal to send out. Well, it's and- not quite universal. The Caucasians have a, a whole different pheromone. And so the other bees can't pick that up. That's what the issue is. So Jeff Kirkhoff wants to know, why don't we hear as much about the Caucasian bees? And it says on our site that they're on the decline. I know that you mentioned they come obviously from the mountainous region in Europe. Is that part of the reason maybe more so our beekeepers are in the south or in the warmer areas or what's the Well, the Italian bees folks have been here in the United States for hundreds and hundreds of years. And in fact, It can even be said that the Mayflower brought some of the Italian bees with them in an effort to help those sailors with with honey once they found land here. The Caucasians have not been promoted, Nikki, very much here in the U.S., and that's the reason why we, we brought that line on is to expand everybody's knowledge of it. 
to our shock, and that's a that's a good word to use, mm-hmm. of how many of our beekeepers said, hey, sign me up for one. Sign yeah. me up for two. No, send me a five pack. <laughs> so those are the things that will help promote mm-hmm. the Caucasian bees here in the U.S. Well, and they too, you know, everybody wants the honey from their bees, but with the Caucasians, you know, mm-hmm. they're a big propolis builder. Mm-hmm. And there have been a lot of studies coming mm-hmm. out recently on the medicinal purposes. And not only that, but I mean, people make, you know, put it in your lip balms and lotions yep. and things like that. But I mean, there's a lot of benefits to Caucasians. So I will not be sleeping on them next year. I'm going to get some because I did not get any this year, yes. but I will be doing the Caucasian. The propolis is sap, folks. That's what, what it basically is, is sap. And what they do is they bring that back into the hive and they coat the whole inside of the hive with, with this sap. So it seals it up and also any kind of connections where your top bar is connecting to your side bar, they will go on ahead and put that propolis around there to seal that off. They do this to help eliminate any kind of bugs getting into the hive and also to keep it clean. So that's what propolis does for the bees. Now, for us as human beings, I mean, it's used, like Nikki said, in a lot of different lotions and potions mm-hmm. on that there. Shauna Wheat would like to know, do you feel like they would be good in Oklahoma climate? Yes. Yes, because Oklahoma gets cold. It does. It gets like cold. Like I said, I lived out there, and I was very surprised that first year at just how cold it actually the wind. gets. Yes. The yeah. wind. Yeah, and we had more snow out there that first year I was out there mm-hmm. than I probably have ever seen in my life. It was mm-hmm. just it just was a really cold winter. But, yeah, you'd be surprised at how cool it gets. I've been in the shock of the Midwest mm-hmm. winters out there, and it's nothing like what we have here. Yeah. It, I mean, it gets cold. Yes. 